Do you want to know about the magic O response to negative attention seeking and other comments? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about the magic O. In this video, we're going to be talking about negative attention seeking and rude comments and what effect those have on us and how we can teach our children to navigate those very simply by using the magic O. I developed the magic O years ago when I had therapeutic treatment care children. So I did foster care for troubled teens. They were all between the ages of 12 and 18 and oftentimes they would struggle socially. Many times, we always took in two at a time, many times there would be one of them that was negative attention seeking all of the time and then another one that was like, oh, this is driving me crazy. How do I handle this person that I have to live with that's always negative attention seeking? But then, interestingly enough, both of the foster children would end up expressing how they were frustrated with children at school that would tease them or bully them or try to control them, which is all also another form of negative attention seeking. And so I taught them about the magic O in order to handle those problems. So let's talk a little bit about the negative attention seeking because they need to know what that is. So it's really important to deliberately train our children so that they can analyze not only their own behaviors, but other people's behaviors. When a person is self-governing, they analyze themselves, their behaviors, their thoughts, their feelings, other people people around them and then they make plans for how to proceed while they are communicating with other people and when they're choosing which behaviors they want to engage in. So a person who is self-governed really does a lot of analysis. They're not afraid of it, especially knowing that they can find problems with themselves and have to change. Instead of being afraid of that, they are actually empowered by analyzing themselves and finding things to change about themselves. Now, before you think, well, well, my child's out because they do not want to know anything bad about themselves and neither does my spouse and neither does... Okay, before you think that, just so you know, this has to be trained. Self-government is something that is trained. I believe it was Thomas Jefferson that said that, that a person isn't born just knowing how to be self-governed, but that we have to train it in them. And it is true, it's a trained behavior. So you train your children how to analyze. So teaching them what they're seeing from their peers is incredibly enlightening. You're also, of course, going to be teaching them how to analyze their own behaviors as well. So how do we teach our children to analyze their own behaviors, we do that by praising, pre-teaching, and correcting. Those are three self-government skills that parents can really nail so that they can calmly and effectively teach their children how to analyze themselves. Once a child gets the opportunity to analyze themselves on a regular basis, then they more easily transition to analyzing other people around them. And hopefully, because the analysis has been done with charity in their own home, they will also analyze the other people with this feeling of charity. There is another thing that I teach in my Parenting a House United book, which really helps with analysis and that is meetings. So we have three different types of meetings. We have couples meetings, family meetings, and then individual mentor meetings. In all of these meetings, we are analyzing what's going on, what we want to have happen, and making plans for getting ourselves there. There's also a problem solving skill that I teach called SODAS, which is an acronym for situation, options, disadvantages, advantages, solution. And this helps develop the prefrontal cortex, which incidentally is key for analysis. So analyzing is vital. So what you're going to do is you are going to talk about negative attention seeking with your child, whether it's your child that has the problem or some other child that is having the problem. I'm assuming in this case, if you're watching this video, that you are having an issue where someone else is maybe bullying or doing negative attention seeking to your child and you're wanting your child to know how to handle that 
difficult bully situation. What you do is first help them see what to see. Negative attention seeking looks like controlling. It looks like a person trying to get another person to think negatively about them or to think negatively about themselves. So it's a negative way to get in control of a social circumstance. So what is positive attention seeking? Well, a positive attention seeking circumstance is when a person uses a positive means to try to maintain control over a situation. Many people will be silly to try to positive attention seek and, and very quickly that turns to negative attention seeking. If they can't get the rise that they want out of people, they push and push and push until people don't want it. So if someone doesn't want it and you are pushing it, then that is negative attention seeking. If they do want it and you are pushing it, then that's positive attention seeking. You're trying to please someone with your actions. Children need to understand that. If they are doing something on purpose that somebody does not want them to do or has told them that's bad or that's wrong and they are rebelling and pushing against that directive, then they are negative attention seeking. And this is just a way to control other people's emotions and behaviors. If someone is doing that to them, then they need to learn about the magic O. Here's another thing before we get to the magic O, which is a really simple but profound thing, is that if someone is complaining, that's also negative attention seeking. Nobody likes to hear complaining and it actually controls the flow and tone of a conversation. So if somebody is complaining, telling you, oh my bad day, this and this and this and this, just trying to win in some award that doesn't exist for having the worst day possible by telling everybody about their bad news all of the time, that's negative attention seeking. There is someone that is a dear friend of mine that has a habit of complaining Everything is negative. They're a pessimistic person. They always see the glass half empty. So I have to take the person in small doses because I don't want to be around that a lot, even though I really care about the person. So what I do is I utilize the magic O. The magic O is basically just one word, one word that can change everything. Words are powerful. That's why I write books like this so that I can teach people new words to say. If they adjust words just slightly and adjust their tone just slightly, it makes a world of difference. So the word O oh says a lot of things. When my friend who likes to tell me how horrible her day is because she must think that that's how she bonds with people. Then when she talks, I don't commiserate with her. I don't share how bad my day is. I don't try to win the prize for the worst day. And I don't feed it either. I don't say, oh yeah, that person was horrible to you or whatever. Maybe occasionally I might say, oh, that must have been hard. But most of the time when they are just negative attention seeking and trying to suck the energy out of the room with all of their negative stories or negative behaviors, then I just look at them and I say, oh. And the friend of mine will keep going and then I say, oh. And after a few O's, they just kind of stop because it's a way to tell them I'm listening to what you have to say, but the way that you're communicating right now is not something that I want to engage in. I hear you and I understand, but I can't keep feeding this. Let's switch subjects. Right? So instead of just shutting them down completely and saying, can we talk about something else? This is super negative because now that person feels like, oh, that, you know, I've just been attacked. And with a bully, by the way, if you just say, hey, you know, you're, you're not being nice and you need to be nice to me or whatever, <laughs> they're going to be like, yes, it's working. But if they're bullying you and then you look at them and you say, Oh, inside your head you think, I know what you're doing. And now suddenly when you said, oh, and you thought, I know what you're doing, that person has, they don't know what to do with it. And they might try to attack you for saying, oh, but, but what is that? That's nothing, you know? They're, then they're gonna be showing you, oh, this is, this is bigger than my 
bullying. I don't know what to do with this. It's a response that shows I'm not just going to lay down and take this. And I actually know a lot about what's happening right now. I'm analyzing it, but you don't get the benefit of knowing what it is that I'm thinking at this time. And that is a way to shut down bullying, but in a way where you don't have to engage in a battle. I had one foster daughter in particular who was incredibly bullied. She was small for her age. She was a little bit hyper. She had a tendency to over communicate, I guess, and touch people too much and stuff like that. And so people started picking on her and she ended up having a couple of girls who were picking on her a lot and they were bullying her. And so this is when the magic O was formed. And I decided that she needed a word to say because saying nothing was not working. They were thinking that their bullying was still working. So she needed to just be able to say something that would let them know this isn't affecting me, but I know what you're doing. And so the magic O happened. It works with adults. It works with children. You can use it with all kinds of tones. I do recommend a charitable but knowing tone. So you're like, oh, you know, like, okay. Or like, oh, I hear you. A hear you tone also works really well. Just saying oh to a person. Who knew that it could be that powerful, but it absolutely is. Words are incredibly powerful. There are more words that I can teach you to help your children, but we're gonna do that in a different video. I have a full length class that I recommend that you watch. That full length class is called The Not So Known Secret for Parenting Success. Click on the link to that video now and you'll learn many more words and skill sets that will help you teach yourself and your children self-government.